Good morning, River House. Pastor Jordan here. Thank you for everyone who has been uh, tuning in morning after morning to our devotional series. Uh, moving forward, starting this week, they're going to be posted every other day instead of every day. And in the off days, uh, we still encourage, we'll have the scripture reading plan posted, and we want you to just stick to uh, your rhythm of life and your six daily disciplines. And um, you may be adding them or adjusting them at this point, and you do have permission to do that, but just to, to stick to this, and then we're going to keep supplementing with these devotionals. Um, this morning, I want to talk uh, about uh, waiting on the Lord. And in Luke 24, uh, verse 49, Jesus says, Behold, I'm sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you're to stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. And so Jesus instructs his disciples. He's saying that I have, I have a greater dispensation of grace for your life, but you need to wait if you're going to get it, right? I have more of the spirit of God that I want to deposit upon you. You're going to be clothed with power from on high, but you will not be positioned to receive it unless you wait on me, right? Terry is another word they use in the whole English, which I like in some ways more than wait because it speaks to the active nature of waiting, right? When you wait on something, it's like a hunter waiting in the blind for game to pass by, right? A, a, a devout hunter will be someone that will prepare for sometimes weeks for the moment um, to even get to the blind to wait. There's a preparatory process. It's very active, Right? If you value something like a home or a, a, a valuable purchase item, people will wait for that and they will save intentionally, sometimes for months, if not years, to purchase something they value. Right? The truth is that what you value is what you will wait for. And Jesus is saying, I have something beyond your, the, the, the value of this world, but you're not going to get it until you wait, right? Waiting is an active process that though outwardly looks like inactivity, inwardly it, it requires a lot of movement and it's actually a journey. Uh, there's a, a, the, the founder of the monastic movement and he was a desert father named St. Anthony. And he was the first man to ever go into seclusion and seek the Lord. And uh, he had gone into the Egyptian desert, settled on a mountain to seek God in isolation. But because of the grace that was upon his life, people just began coming out to him so much so that he was getting overwhelmed and exhausted by the ministry. He tried to escape the people. He went to get on a boat that was on the river nearby to go further upstream. And the Spirit of God stopped him and said, Anthony, you're not going to find what you're looking for upstream. He said, you're only going to find what you're searching for if you'll go into the inner mountain. And God actually led him into the inner desert of Egypt to a mountain where there was a stream and he made his house there. But I believe symbolically, it's the same journey that we must go on within ourselves. There is an inner mountain. There is a place of intimacy within our hearts that we must go, go into, and it is a journey to get there. We will only come to that abiding place, that inner sanctuary within, right? If we learn to wait on God, waiting on him, sitting with him, investing the time to simply pursue Jesus and be with him is a journey that is beyond any journey we can go on the outside. I believe right now we're there, you know, maybe not right now exactly because of this corner quarantine, but in our age of culture, their travel has never been more, you know, uh, celebrated as a culture. Everyone's always wanting to go on the next great adventure. And the truth is that the great adventure of the soul is when we learn to wait on God and go on the journey into the inner mountain where man and God abide and become one. Right? There is a love affair between your heart and the heart of God that you have been created for, but you will only ever experience the depths of it if you will wait. Right? We have to wait on God. And part of waiting on God, like we see the disciples who obeyed Jesus, is they sat together in an, open, in an upper room for many days doing one thing, praying and searching for God with all their hearts. Right. I, I want to ask you just the question, have you ever spent one entire day in prayer searching G for Jesus' heart? Right? Just, just one day, let alone many days. Right? M my guess is that for most Christians, you'd say, no, I have never spent an entire day in prayer. And I'd say, what does that reveal? Is he the pearl of great price or is he not? 
Is he the treasure or is he not? Right? And I believe right now, it, it, this isn't every season of life. Right, but this is a season of life where we can seek God like never before. And I want to challenge, I believe that God is actually provoking some of you in this time to actually set apart time and space to seek him like you have never sought him, to actually wait and tarry for the promise of the spirit of God to come upon you in a way that you never thought was possible. Right, a lot of times, a lot of Christians look at anointed Christians and they say, man, those are special people with special callings and special giftings. I say, no, those are people that chose to wait on the Lord. Right? If you'll wait on God, you'll receive the promise of the spirit in a measure beyond what you yet, you, you've known. But if you don't wait, you won't receive because the waiting is the internal journey. It takes you to the inner mountain. It takes you to the place where you can actually receive the power from on high. We have to be a people that wait. When I was 18 years old, I had a divine appointment with a, a man that was a stranger to me. He was a man of God and a man of prayer. We struck up a conversation. It led to a multiple hours of conversing. We, we went to the same university and then he looked at me at the end of it and he said, I don't invite anybody to join me in these times. He said, but I pray every morning at 5 a.m in the prayer chapel and I feel like I'm supposed to invite you. And when he said that, I, I, I had never woken up early to pursue God. I, had, I, I would say I had a pretty mediocre prayer life up until that point in my life. And something in me, my spirit, my spirit was willing to say yes to that invitation. And I began, I lived at the bottom of a hill. I began waking up at 4.30 a.m. every day and I would walk up that mountainside. I would join him in that chapel and I learned how to pray. I learned how to wait on God. And a lot of people are looking for the short circuit, the shortcut to learn how to pray effectively. There is no shortcut to learn how to pray. The way you learn how to pray is you spend time waiting on the Lord. The way you learn how to pray is you spend time in prayer. Everyone starts as a beginner. Everyone starts as a novice. Everyone starts not knowing what they're doing, but it takes time, right? I said, yes, my spirit was willing and I said, yes. And I've continued to say yes to this day. I say, yes, I say, yes, I say, yes, Lord. I wait on you. I'm seeking you. I wanna challenge you. Some of you today, you, you waste your mornings and you waste them with sleep. You will not look back 50 years from now and say, I wish I would have slept 90 more minutes each morning. I'm just not a morning person. Neither am I. Neither am I. But I want to challenge you just to, to, to take back your mornings uh, and even the 5 a.m. hour. Make your mornings the time where you pursue the face of Jesus. You will wait on what you value. You will wait on that which you treasure. And I want to challenge you, wait upon God. Make your early morning hour a time to wait on him, to seek him first, right? There are times in our lives where we just have to decide things, you guys. We don't have to wait for a, an angel to come with a trumpet. We don't have to wait for the burning bush. We just decide within us. Our spirit is willing. It's our flesh that is weak. Your spirit is willing to get up at the morning hour and awaken the dawn with praise. Your spirit is willing to commune with him. Your spirit is willing. Even as I'm speaking, your spirit is being fed and you feel what I'm saying is true. Your spirit is willing to seek and wait upon God because your spirit is yearning for him and him alone. It's your flesh that is weak. And let's make this time in wake of the Easter message we just, we just heard and received that Jesus rose from the dead. He said, wait in Jerusalem for the fullness of the promise to be realized in your life. Wait upon God. I want to challenge you to seek him with more time and more hours in these days than you ever have before. I want to challenge you, make the next 40 days of your life, seek God with a fervor and an intensity that you have never known. Spend more time seeking him than you have ever spent. Pursue him with your whole heart. Wait and see if his promise is true. Wait upon God and see if he is faithful because he will be. He will clothe you with power from on high. He will bring you to the inner mountain and you will abide and commune with him. You will hear his voice in ways you never have. You will be, you will experience God because he is longing to show you who he is. So God bless you in the waiting, in the seeking, 
in the pursuing. Your spirit is willing. Just lean into your spirit and let your spirit will your soul and your flesh into seeking God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. God bless you. I love you. And may God clothe us all with power from on high as we wait upon him fervently with great expectation. Cause you're teaching me how to slow